Jacob Myers here with Jackson Robinson. Busy summer, busy spring. Before we maybe get into some of that recent success, before we get into some of that basketball, maybe break down, you know, you've had a really unique journey. Walk us through kind of how you got to where you are today. Yeah, it's been, like you said, it's been a journey for sure. Um, Starting out, I mean, out of high school, I graduated a year early, uh, my junior season. I went to Texas A&M with Coach Buzz. Uh, we went through that whole season with COVID. Um, it was brand new for everybody. It was a tough year. Um, a lot of people got sick, so we had to forfeit a lot of games. We ended up getting last in the SEC. Um, so, yeah, it was a really rough year. Um, but, you know, I felt like it was just best for me to get out of there. Um, the situation just wasn't great at the time for me. So, you know, I just wanted something new. Um, so I decided to transfer. And during that time, during COVID, people couldn't go on visits. So... Um, I was talking to all these schools, but I hadn't met anybody in person. So it was really hard for me to, you know, be able to trust anybody at that time. Um, and I know Coach Muss had reached out and he was somebody I was really familiar with. It was actually um, Coach Muss in Arkansas was a school that I hadn't chose over Texas A&M at that time. So um, I had been on a lot of visits and they were good and I kind of already knew like of the familiarity of the town, uh, Fayetteville. So, you know, um, that whole season went through, uh, we got to the elite eight. It was great. It was good. Um, but you know, I was just looking for something better for myself. Um, I had the opportunity to play with pros, um, a whole bunch of pros left after that season. So it was a really good experience for me, a really good year. Um, but coach must just felt like he won something, uh, better, I guess. Um, so uh, I had gotten told that I had to leave. So I had left. Uh, I got the runoff waiver for that. Um, and so I transferred again and Coach Pope had hit me up in the portal with BYU. So um, and he, from the from the jump, he, you know, he took a chance on me and I'll be forever grateful for that. But, um, you know, it was it was just a uh, it was a tough time for me, I would say. And Coach Pope just, uh, you know, helped me through it. He slowly worked with me and gained my trust. And, I mean, eventually it obviously paid off. So here I am today. Um, you know, we connected after the season, and you talked about, you know, when you arrived at BYU, you know, everyone talks about, you know, proving others wrong. But you, you felt you had to prove yourself right. And you had a lot to prove entering BYU with Coach Pope. Um, and you said you have so much appreciation for Coach Pope and his staff and the relationship you guys have. So what was that like, you know, going into BYU, were there for two years, had some great progress year to year, game to game. Um, like when you look back at those two years, what sticks out the most? Um, I'd say just my growth and uh, also just the time that Coach Pope and his staff put into, to, like I said, gaining my trust and working with me as a player and an individual. Um, Coming from my first two schools, like I said, they weren't great experiences for me personally. Um, so at that time, I was having a hard time trusting coaches, honestly. Um, and Coach Pope talks about it all the time, but I used to never go into his office or anything like that after practice. Um, I'd, I'd see him at practice, and that was kind of it. Um, but, you know, since then, our relationship's grown so much. Um, we talk all the time, daily just about different things, how we can get better. He always asks me for stuff. I ask him for feedback. Um, so it's a great relationship. And then Cody Fieger is another guy, the, our assistant coach that came with Coach Pope. Um, I'm in his office also. We watch film every day. So, um, you know, it's just it's great having two coaches that I've been with for three years and coming to Kentucky and, um, you know, just feeling comfortable, honestly. And it's easy to, to lead these guys and um, – just get everybody acclimated, even the coaches, with just the familiarity of our our entire program. So um, that's all I'm trying to do right now. That's my main focus. But what's it like playing for uh, Coach Pope? I mean, I, I see him on the road recruiting. He seems like he has a really unique personality. Seems like he's always got a smile on his face. What's it What's it like uh, being with Coach? Man, he's a great guy. Um, like I said, he's helped me a lot. Um, I feel like. When I got to BYU, I probably wasn't as mature as I, I could have been. Um, and I think Coach Pope really just helped me through everything, um, especially knowing that a place like BYU I'm not familiar with. 
Um, before I went to BYU, I honestly didn't even really know anything about it. So, um, yeah, he just he just helped me a lot personally, and I've seen it with a whole bunch of other of my teammates, um, other guys on BYU, players here. Um, he just cares. He cares about everybody. He's going to remember everybody's name in the gym. Um, he's going to make sure that everybody feels welcome. And, I mean, he's a coach that anybody would want to have, honestly. He's the best of both worlds. And then, you know, kind of getting to more of the basketball side of things, you know, you had career highs across the board, 14 points per game, Big 12 six man of the year, 35% from three on seven attempts a game. So you were firing more threes than almost anyone across the country. And, you know, talk about having that relationship with coach. I mean, your skill set was a huge aspect for that team's success. Um, what are some of the things we talked about, you know, the improvement, the growth? What are some of the things you thought you showed this past season um, before ultimately testing the draft process? Um, honestly, I didn't when I to be truthful with you, I didn't know what to expect when I had entered my first season in the Big 12 because um, it was the first season for the program also. So um, to be honest, it was it was tough. I think once conference play hit, um, I think my consistency was kind of up and down. Um, so that's something that I've been working on this year a lot is just being more consistent. Um, and I think guys like Otega Owe, Lamont Butler guarded me every day in practice is just pushing me to be that much better. Um, obviously, it can get a little annoying, but um, I know it's what I need, especially at the next level. So just playing against like elite level guards that can defend really well is uh, something that I think that'll really pay off for me once once conference play conference play hits this this year, um, and even just the non conference with all the the big games that we have leading up leading up to it. Yeah, definitely. I, I spoke with Coach Brooks on the road this summer, and he was like, "Man, we got some dogs. Like practice is competitive." Really, it's crazy just because uh, when you walk into practice, there's so many so many different pieces, so many talented players that anybody in practice every day just looks looks good. It doesn't, it's not always the same player. Um, and the, the practice scrimmages and everything is just really competitive. It's great energy in the gym. Um, Cause you know, we have a whole bunch of older guys. So it's just, it's really refreshing to have a whole bunch of older guys that have also already been through the college scene and know what's going on. Um, I think it runs a lot smoother and everybody's picking things up way faster. Before we get into some of this, you know, film stuff, you did declare for the draft after the season. What went into that decision? And then maybe just walk us through that process. I mean, that must be an incredible feeling after all the adversity you faced. It was it was crazy, honestly. Uh, it felt surreal just, you know, being able to say that I can enter the NBA draft. Uh, it's something that I've always thought about, like, as a little kid. Um, and just being able to live out my dream. Even just being here at Kentucky, it's, it's a blessing. And, um, I mean, I can't help but think, the people that have helped me get here, like Coach Pope, uh, my parents. So, um, you know, the whole process was was great. Um, got the feedback that I needed, that I felt like I needed to improve my game and take the next step to be a pro um, and make an impact on an NBA team once that time's, once that time's here. So, um, I mean, I, w I don't regret pulling out of the draft or anything like that, but the experience was was definitely what I needed. You know, you got the direct invite to Chicago. NBA teams wanted to see you play in the combine, go through interviews, workouts. So maybe more specifically, like, what was it like in Chicago for you going through that process? Because obviously, before we get into that, I mean, <laughs> going through the draft process and then this year with the portal, it's everything was very messy. Um, the timelines overlapped. You know, I've talked to a couple of players that were in a similar situation like you, where you have real NBA demand, where you're going to Chicago, going through interviews. And then you also have all these different schools trying to get a hold of you in the portal. It's a lot to uh, balance. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it was a lot, um, honestly. Just trying to figure out how to balance both of them. Um, but when I was at the Combine, I told all the schools, like, that was my main focus. Uh, obviously put my best foot forward, um, trying to get drafted by a team. Um, but, you know, it was, it was just a crazy feeling having so many teams, so many teams and so many schools just – reaching out um, and like like you said the combine's crazy you know just having what is it 70 players 80 players that are invited so yeah. just being a part of those 70 players is a blessing um, and it was good for me just to see why I stack up against you know the best competition especially in that last draft class so 
um, I felt pretty confident about it, but I also felt like I could come back and make more of an impact and uh, hopefully put myself in a better position. I liked you said to me, you know, after the season, when you're going through everything, you said the thing that makes me the most excited is knowing I have so much more I can give and I'm just now figuring it out. That's that's awesome. I mean, you went into college at 17 years old? 17, yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy just because um, for me, I think about it as this is my junior year, just because my first two years of college, I didn't play. I didn't see the floor my first year of college, COVID hit. We were the second to last team at SEC. We kept getting COVID, all the players. So I never got any real game experience. There wasn't a crowd around. Just small things that you don't think will make a difference, but are a huge difference. So, um, you know, just stepping into this next season, I just feel like a more complete and more confident player. Um, I'm just trying to lead my team, honestly. I feel like I can do a lot this year, so. What were some of the feedback you got from teams? Like it's a valuable uh, process for your improvement. Uh, like we touched on earlier, I feel like most of it was just the consistency. Because in non-conference, I was killing. Um, I felt like I was doing what I needed to do. Um, I, I think that was when I kind of got put on the map was after my non-conference. Uh, it was really solid. I was making shots at a high level. Uh, I think I was defending well. Um, but then conference hit and the scouts started to come, obviously. So... And that was my first time being scouted against, you know, like this is major competition. This is the Big 12. So, um, and being at the top of the scouting report, it, it's a lot tougher than, you know, just another player. So um, just trying to figure out the small things, honestly. And I think it improved as the season went on and I got more comfortable with it. So um, I think this last season is just going to make it even better. You ultimately made the decision to withdraw and follow Coach Pope to Kentucky. Um, how tough was that decision? I mean, there's a lot of different variables at play. And then when you ultimately did make that decision to Kentucky, how, what was that feeling like? Man, it was crazy because I was in a – the day of the deadline, I was in a workout in Milwaukee. Um, and I had no idea what I was going to do. I was so, like – everything was just – it was a lot. Um, and while I was going through the workout, like the players and the coaches, they were asking me, like, what I was going to do because they knew that – uh, Coach Pope had went to Kentucky, so everybody was was interested in, to see what I was going to do. Um, but once I got to the airport to go back home after the workout, um, I just felt like just from the feedback I had heard, I thought that it'd probably be a better decision for me to come back to school. Um, like I said, another year doesn't hurt. I always put myself in a better position. So, um, And when it comes to Coach Pope, there was, there was no question it was going to be him, um, especially with a platform like Kentucky. Uh, can't get any bigger than this. So just coming out here and playing against the best competition, having some great teammates, uh, great coaches, um, I think it's just only going to make me 10 times better. And then that was probably your first experience with that type of fan base. <laughs> what was the uh, – Twitter was in a frenzy. Uh, you know, <laughs> like you said, it was, you know, a tough decision. You got to use all the time you have. What was it like seeing the type of fandom and just absolute frenzy that went happen when you made the decision? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, like seeing my name trending on Twitter, and just things <laughs> like that. Like those are things that you just dream of when you're a little kid. So it was just really cool to see um, that people are really paying attention to what I do on the basketball floor. Um, it's it's a blessing, honestly. But, um, you know, I, I just had to shut my phone off that night because it, <laughs> it was too much. Everybody was texting me trying to figure out what I was going to do. But I knew, but I just wanted to, to wait a day just because I wanted to let it set in just for myself. That's all it was. Yeah, for sure. That's a tough decision that most people don't ever have to make, being that close to your, your goal and, you know, delaying that gratification for the long-term payoff. Um, I thought one of the funnier things was, you know, a couple guys like you, like where you had really tough decisions, where you have legitimate NBA attention and have a lot of college options. Um, I think it's always funny when, like, the fans assume, like, just because there's not a social media post that, like, you missed the deadline. Right, it's like, yeah. <laughs> It's funny to go back and read like, the comments and just what everybody was saying. Because, I mean, like, players, we see that stuff. So it's just funny to just read it and see it. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a good time, though. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we'll get into um, some of your game. I think, you know, obviously it starts with your shooting. 